Well, good morning again, and thank you for tuning in. I'm blessed. One, first off, because this weekend's message was not a message that's just for you. It's it's a message for me and you. And the reason why it's a message for me and you is because there are some guarantees that are going to happen in our life. And there is a pure example of what righteousness looks like when they happen. Let me back up. What's going to happen in our life are trials, tribulations, being falsely accused. And there's going to be a moment where we have to wrestle with the idea of death. And depending on how we are and who we are in our journey of following Jesus and being a disciple will actually determine how it is we handle those things. Jesus is the pure prime example of what that looks like. While he was being um, in his trials, he never tried to defend himself. While he was being falsely accused, he never said, I didn't do these things. I never, I never incited a mob or a resurrection. I've never um, told anyone not to pay taxes. He never had to defend himself because he knew who he was and whose he was. Again, I think as we process when trials happen, not if, but when, our ability to either reach up in our trials or reach out in our trials will determine who it is that we're following. Let me give you an example. I got a good buddy of mine who's in my small group. Uh, My wife and I lead a couples group on Wednesday nights. And he, you may have heard in this weekend's message, He got falsely accused of something he did at work, and they fired him for it. They didn't hear his story. They didn't hear his side. They just fired him for it. And he was falsely accused of potentially having violence in the workplace. If you know this guy, that's impossible. (laughs) That's, That's not who he is. But yet, that's still what he got accused of. Here's the beautiful thing about the situation. This buddy of mine is a person who has been training himself to reach up in the midst of trials versus people who reach out. And how he's been training himself is through the daily connection, through prayer and Bible engagement, staying in God's word, better understanding who he is in Christ Jesus and who he belongs to. The other thing he's been doing, he's been growing in faithful participation of a small group. He's in my group. He had men who understood and heard his story and came side by side to lift him up so they didn't have to reach out. Now, in our flesh, the tendency and the, and, the, and the first thing this brother of mine wanted to do was reach out. He started reaching out to the stories that he always tells himself. The stories of failure. The stories of not being good enough. The stories of, I'm a husband who can't provide. He wanted to reach out. And in reaching out, the enemy will give you the desires of your flesh. In reaching out, my brother could have very quickly went down a downward spiral. But because he reached up and had brothers who were lifting up his arms to do so, he not only was met with love through Jesus Christ, but the love of community and through understanding that brothers and sisters come together to help one another. In Acts chapter 2, it says none of their needs were gone unmet. My brother was able, through the help of another person in his small group, get an interview and land another job just like that. The power of being in a small group, the power of being in community is that when trials happen, not if, but when you have someone, you have multiple someones, you have a group, a host, a new family that you've been adopted into the same way that Jesus adopts you into his family. And so, as you're wrestling with how you reach out versus reaching up, my hope and prayer to you today is this, that you stop trying to do it alone. That you get connected to God. And there's Denise, you're, you're here all the time watching these devotionals. There's um, so many of you that, that get on here and, and you're constantly liking and commenting, Redora, thank you. you. You constantly hop on these devotionals and you give us your heart. And there's another brother who's every day commenting, every day saying, thank you for this, Pastor Jeff. Thank you for this, Pastor Jake. You guys are amazing. You're connecting. That's part of the connection of better understanding what God's desire is for your life so you can better understand who you are but you learn whose you are see the community you learn whose you are when you're doing that in life when you take what you're doing vertically and you lay it down horizontally and do life with other people God wants to work a miracle through and he wants to use the people you're doing community with to do that so Lord give us a better understanding 
of how to reach up the way you did. You never lost who you were and whose you were. When you faced the trials of being called guilty and you weren't, when you were falsely accused of doing things you never did, and when you faced death with a mob of people yelling, crucify him, crucify him, you never lost sight of the mission of who you were, Jesus the Messiah, here, the King of Kings, to usher us into an eternity. God, let us live a life that's so connected to you that when trials happen, when we're falsely accused, when we face death, that we reach up and we don't reach out. God, we surrender to you today. It's in your name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless.